Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in to this episode of NotAnalog.com. I'm looking at something a little different. It's a world first. This product doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. Well, nothing like it exists anywhere else in the world. I'm just curious out of you guys, if you've got a Nintendo DS or a PSP or an old school Game Boy, and you carry that around in your pocket, and you also carry around a mobile phone or a smartphone, maybe you've got a Xperia phone, you've got an iPhone, you've got something else. It takes a bit of space, right? You know, it might be quite thick. You know, the Game Boy stuck to a, a phone. That would be a big unit. So Sony's done something. They've released the Xperia Play. Now, this is the wonderful box that it comes in. And ultimately, it's your PSP and smartphone in one. And this is her. Well, this is him. This is it. Now, it looks like an ordinary smartphone. It's got the big screen, it's got the buttons, it's got a camera at the front, it's got a camera at the back. That's great. Until you do this, all of a sudden, you've now got a phone which can convert very quickly into a gaming device. And it's not a bad gaming device either. The, uh, the buttons, all of the buttons and the uh, touch analog pads are very, very good. Um, it feels solid. I can close it and open it. I don't feel like I'm going to break it. Uh, and it's still quite thin. Now you'll notice these buttons, I'll give you a tour of the device. Um, these two little buttons on this side, the L and R, so if you've played a PlayStation before, you would know uh, exactly how to use these buttons, right? Uh, you've got a volume rocker in the middle, and turn it up this way, you've got the power button, which I think is a bit awkward the way it's positioned, because it's kind of behind the screen. Uh, so I turn it on the other side, very simple headphone jack and micro USB charger uh, at the bottom just to open the case, that's all there is. So on the front of the device, we've got the uh, little VGA camera, little um, proximity sensor, and obviously the standard Android buttons that you would see, like the back home uh, options and search. So really, really simple on the outside, but you know, obviously the big change is where you can see these, these paddles, which are, which are really, really cool. Um, and obviously, yeah, slide this thing open and uh, there's nothing else in the world that looks like that. Um, now, I'm going to give you guys a demo of this phone right now, so I don't think there's much more to show you on the actual outside of the device. Um, let's do this. Okay, so just having a look at the device, um, it is 175 grams, and it's got a 480 by 854 pixel screen. It's a 4 inch screen. I'm just going to fire it up. Um, the little power button, you can see I kind of have to go around the back to push it on. I find that really awkward, but uh, let's turn it back on again, swipe it through. So I've left the Xperia Play thing open from before. I'm just going to exit that because I don't want to show you that just yet. However, you know, you'll notice the home screen. Obviously, a typical Android. Um, you know, with your five home screens, I've added some things like picture frames, um, Google Search. This is new. The PlayStation Pocket widget. Um, it came preloaded with Crash Bandicoot from old PlayStation One days, if you remember that. Uh, this is a really, really cool feature from uh, from Sony. It's the uh, Timescape widget, so it allows you to filter through your uh, Facebook and Twitter updates um, really, really quickly. So let it download a little bit. Um, and obviously you can update your status from here as well. Uh, the Music widget, standard. Um, obviously, this is a really cool little widget from Sony as well to go through your gallery. Um, so looking at photos and video, I find that so, so handy. Uh, and going back, nothing is really unusual. The wallpaper is a little different. Um, some live wallpapers which Sony has added in uh, just to do around the PSP sort of uh, wallpaper. So nothing too unusual. Obviously you can change the color. I've set mine to change every hour or something like that. Unfortunately right now it's pink. But anyway, so I won't go into that too much. I'm going to jump in here. One of the big differences from uh, normal plain uh, Android is that they've decided to do sideways screens. Um, you'll notice on say the Nexus S review which I did it was all scrolling up and down. Uh, it also has a little thing here where you can sort your icons uh, in a different order. I've had them sorted by most used. Uh, the most used app for me is Twitter and I use the browser and obviously Facebook is pretty important for me as well. Again I'm just going to go on this Timescape app because I think it deserves a bit of credit. Um, you know I can go through all my tweets and I can, if I click on one of the Facebook posts or something like that I can really I can really see everything I need and I don't need to jump into any other apps. Um, I think that's important. Obviously I still use the Twitter app a lot and you can still you know, filter between uh, Twitter or Facebook and obviously the integrated. Uh, you can add Foursquare into this as well. I'm just not a huge Foursquare user. 
Uh, so some other things to check out which are somewhat unique to, uh, to this Sony phone, uh, the Xperia Play I should add. Uh, I'm just going to go on the camera. Something I wanted to point out, they've customized a lot of this phone, but they didn't customize the camera app. And I think that's a little disappointing. I really would have thought that they could make, instead of having to be touch button all the time, why don't you use these clickers to take the photo, you know? Click, click, click. I think that would be a really, really smart thing to do, but um, who knows? They just they left the camera app completely plain Android. Uh, the browser, obviously, is very, very good. I'm going to jump in there real quick. Uh, I'm not on Wi-Fi at all, so it's very a little bit slower. Um, but obviously, you know, I can go in. Come on. Hello. Here we go. I'm rushing. You know, Sydney Morning Herald website. Oh, it's all Obama at the moment. But very quick and, um, you know, turning into landscape mode, it adjusts very quick as well. The processing on this is quite good. And obviously, you know, if you're going to build a phone that can do gaming as well, it's pretty important that you're going to need that. Uh, so just other things to check out. Uh, importantly for me, TuneIn Radio, one of my favorite apps. I'm just going to go in the gallery and show you some really cool uh, bits about this. Similar to almost Android 2.3 is this sort of searching of the gallery, looking through your photos and things like that. Jump into the video section, kind of the preloaded uh, little Sony video, nothing too uh, surprising. However, the, the screen is very, very clear and very bright. Definitely impressed by that. Just going to go back again. Um, some other things, Gmail obviously is standard. Uh, the news and weather app is standard. The email setup was so, so quick. Angry Birds can never live without Angry Birds. Uh, Google Maps. Obviously a standard thing for Android as well. PlayStation Pocket, again, which is what I showed you with Crash Bandicoot. I hear that they're going to be adding a lot more games to this after the launch. So I'll be really excited to see what they bring. I'd love to see like V-Rally and some of my favorite old PlayStation games back on there. Uh, I've obviously downloaded a lot of other games, which I'll show you in a second. Track ID, very similar to Shazam. Um, media server for DLNA media sharing, so sharing your photos and things like that. FIFA 10, one of my favorite apps. Uh, Wise Pilot, so GPS. Uh, navigation app direct from Sony only. Very, very good. Um, better than the navigation, as you can see, I've used it more. Um, the usual Tetris, again, another game which came with the phone. Um, just the basic stuff. Or oh, Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee is awesome. As in the game, not so much him. I don't have a personal thing for him. Uh, and Sims came with it as well, and Star Battalion. So a lot came with the phone straight up. Uh, as you can see, where my preferences lie on which games I played the most. So let's let's switch this into gaming mode. So straight away as soon as you flick the screen it, it brings this up for you. And these are the games that I've got installed. If I go into the more games section you can see where I can download other games as well and there's so many. Um, like big titles like Assassin's Creed and you know Need for Speed and stuff like that. So this is going to take off. I think this is going to be huge once it uh, starts to get adopted by developers and things like that. It's massive. Obviously EA Games is getting straight into it. Uh, in fact, I'm going to launch this one up. I'm going to do this real time because I want you to be able to see how long it does take to uh, to do this sort of thing because I hate seeing demos where they just, oh, look, I'm already playing the game. You know what? This is how long it takes to bring up a game. And, you know, it checks for updates, which is a bit odd for uh, for a game. I don't really need it to check for updates. Um, I don't know if they're updating team names and stuff like that. I'm not sure. Okay, so the game's actually moving along. Um, just while it's loading up, these are um, touchpads, so the usual joysticks that you used on the PlayStation controller has been uh, replaced by touch. Um, start and select button, which you will be used to. An options button, which is more for Android options. And obviously your uh, directional button pad. So I'm just going to hit kick off. Sometimes I prefer just to touch because it's a bit hard to forget. So yeah, yeah, I'll play soccer, I'll play against these people, we'll start match. You can see the, the menu is very quick. Um, now, obviously, holding this, looking on this side, I've got my controllers here, and the volume rocker is a little awkward to get to once you start playing, and the sound comes out from the bottom here. I almost think they could have put a speaker in the middle here to come have the sound come straight at you, but you know, I guess that's their choice. Come on, let's play. Sometimes he uses long intros, and they're like, come on, I just want to get, get to it. Alright, let's see what so you can see that on the screen I've actually got the options to uh, use the on-screen control still, but, oh man, I'm not going to do this. Here we go. 
That's bad news. So you can see how good I am at this soccer game, right? I'm pretty awesome at it. I'm versing a really bad team to begin with. Uh, come on, that was... Oh! Oh! Yeah. Anyway, so I don't want to get too carried away with this. Um, right, I'm going to stop and get out of this. Okay. <sighs> that just gets intense when I'm playing. Um, <laughs> I just forgot that I was filming completely. Alright, so that's that's really, really simple um, what the gaming is like. The graphics are very good, the sound is very good, and it works very quickly as well. Um, obviously, you close the thing and it's gone again. Um, it's a pack-away device. It's really, really simple. Um, what's wrong with that? Okay, so you've had a bit of a look around the phone, and I hope that I've shown you everything that you wanted to see, and you've gotten what you wanted out of this video. I apologize if it was too long, but... This is the Sony Xperia Play. It is probably available in your area very, very soon, if not already. If you have any questions, send me an email, send me a tweet, Facebook it up, whatever it is, and uh, I'll get back in touch with you. I'm doing my best, so um, hit me up.